just want to get a little sophisticated. This is what I decided to wear. She always brings me aprons. Isn't this cute? And you know how those little ruffles are? The ruffles are the thing today, right? And I just thought that was so cute, and I dressed just for my apron. I wanted, huh? I wanted to be totally sophisticated. I'm going to tie it tight so I have a waistline. So you ready to see your blocks? You already looked. You already know. So the first one is called cheese box. Is it cute? It's very, very cute. Cheese box. And let me see. I have another one. I have another one there. You can go up close on it, Ari. That one. And I have the 12-inch size. Aww. And what's really fun is it has this square and a square and a square in the center. Very, very easy. And then if you look up on the board, we gave this to Cindy, our store manager, who is expecting. And we did a fussy cut here in the center. And so that looks really nice, just the fussy cut. Oh, cool. And she's doing like the ocean. So that's a little fish right in the middle, a little fish. And she doesn't want to know the sex, but I'm, think, I'm hoping it's a boy. But this morning they did the needle test on her and said clearly it's a girl. So I think that's for a little boy. And then it has little fish around it. Well, the cheese box. And now I go totally unsophisticated. Now I feel better, huh? I feel right at home. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So it's just really fun. Well, the cheese, the cheese is so um, uh, nourishing. Oh, this is really heavy. I was um, got stopped in traffic over in um, Olivenhain. No, Elfin Forest. Elfin Forest at that traffic stop, and the the director looked in and saw this hat, and he said, "Oh, a Green Bay fan, are you?" Ah. Oh, yeah, I love Green Bay, I said. <laughs> and he believed me. So this is the this is the batik one. Cute. Very, very cute. Very simple. The 12 inch. And then this is the little 6 inch. Cute. So I was thinking, oh, my gosh, cheesecake, something sweet something really sugary and i said now nah, let's just eat cheese <laughs> and guess what goes really good with cheese huh this is so apples this is so cute and this is the crab apple is that cute and it's very cute and you know what it is a little tricky, but this is paperback fusible. You get a break. No needle turn here. Thank you. No needle turn. So I'm going to put this one up here like that. I know, Elizabeth. A couple people do it. Oh, my gosh. Look, we're just getting all kinds of these. And remember the, um, remember the one that had a yellow background? Um, uh, it was like snail's trail. It was um, pig's tail. Pig's yeah. tail had a yellow background, and so I did this in yellow as well so that I can offset them on opposite sides of the quilt. That one was really cute. And I'll show you this one. This is a lesson in value. Teresa did the center with two pieces very close. See how close they are in value? And so we felt that they didn't show off as well. We really like this idea better oh, yeah. with two different values so you can really see it. So it's fun. And where do you see the batik one in that one? Very cute. The board's moving. I know. 
But that one's pretty too. And you can see the stitching on it. So stitching around the outside edge. Nice. Very nice. Yay. All right. So I want you to look at the cheese box. We can talk about the cheese box here. Aren't these fun? Did you know that cheese used to come in boxes? Yep. yep. Well, it's really fun that this, this one is Velveeta. And where did my Velveeta box go? Ah, Velveeta is exactly the same size as the little cheese boxes they must once made. And this one actually says for um, cheese food. And this is out of uh, Mana, Manitowa. Ooh, Manitowa? <laughs> Manitowoc. Manitowoc. Are you from there? Uh, nearby. Nearby from Wisconsin. Yeah. And it's called the Windsor Club. Is that fun? And it's got all of the ingredients in it. And they always, um, some of them, this one was step stapled. But the box itself is pretty rough here. But then the bottom slab was very smooth. And the reason that, oops, <laughs> you don't worry, you don't have to eat this one. <laughs> this is Velveeta. Do you like Velveeta? No. I don't like Velveeta. I only like it in macaroni. Yeah, exactly. Macaroni. So anyhow, it's just really fun that that's the same. But some, the cheese was brought into the warehouse, and one of the things that they did is they they washed it and they cut it and then they covered it with paraffin. And the paraffin is to protect it from the mold. 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 Okay, no, so that's why there's green in here. <laughs> this is the cheese, this is the wax, and that's the mold. We should have, you get it? We should have called it that, huh? Yeah. But anyhow, moldy. So this one is a little Gouda cheese, which is a nice hard cheese. And that's really good. But the cheese, the best cheese of all, the best one of all, is Tillamook out of Oregon. And I understand they have a great little quilt shop, a quilt show up there, a great... A great museum, and I heard they have a barn trail. I have to go there. Just eat my way through cheese. But anyhow, <laughs> in 2010, this was the world champion. 2010, the world champion. Isn't that cool? In the contest. So this one's all natural. It's made from milk from cows, not treated with artificial growth hormones. Ooh. That's organic, huh? And this one is so cool because this says Kraft American. Kraft is such a, an old, old name. And um, this one is even bigger. And this one also says pasteurized processed cheese, five pounds. But it's a great old box. And it's nailed together. Let's look at the bottom. See what it is. Yep, see? Smooth. So you don't puncture the paraffin. Did you know all this? And did you know that this is also a cheese box? Yes, big old round. And see, they grated them and they, um, they put the weight on them. And so this was just a big old round one. I, I keep all of my special stuff in there. Like, <laughs> really old fashioned. I found a bow tie in there. and belts and all kinds of crazy stuff that I've been keeping for years. I'm not sure why. But anyhow, it's really fun. Well, everybody does collect these, and a lot of the men will make their little workbenches, make all their little drawers. This is actually Sue's, and every box is different. She stores her thread in it. Isn't that cute with a little knob? But they always, the men always shellac the boxes and made them nice and and heavy. And this one, I, and there's nothing in there that actually separates the drawers that just three fit in there together. It's really quite simple, huh? It's really, really fun.
Yes, I know how much this one cost me. I will tell you the story. I was in Minnesota, and I went into an antique store, and I found the deal of the century, three ninety-five a box. Wow. I bought three of them, and I had to hand carry them because they're very fragile. I got so nervous when I was in the restroom in the airport because I was afraid they're going to call my flight. I left them in the restroom. Oh. Yes. So I had to come here to California and guess how much this box cost me? No. $18. <laughs> but anyhow, somebody who followed me in the restroom got these best cheese boxes. I know they couldn't wait. But but anyhow, um Oh, you smell the cheese? You want to have cheese, huh? Oh. So we're just going to cube the cheese for you. You all want to have this one, right? You all want to have Tillamunk. Tillamunk cheese. Oops. Along with a great slice of apple. Now, is this good or not? This is much better than sweet apple pie or whatever. <laughs> no, they're not Julian. Huh? I'm convincing you. Anyhow, have you all seen this little cutter? This is very sharp. I just want to warn you, it's very, very sharp. I got it at this um, cooking store down in the Forum. But if you've never seen this, pardon me? Yes, 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 yes. So you just set, center the core under the circle. OK, are you ready? So give me the countdown. One, two, three. Is that fun? It works great. It works great. I just love it. And so now Dory has Gala for Red Delicious. Ooh, apples and cheese. Much better for you. It was actually named by the Country Gentleman magazine in 1932. And look at the center. It is that. A uh, square and a square and a square, right? Do you know how to do that? And then there's just two other parts. There's a nine patch, nine patch, and then just strips. Okay, you ready? So I'm not going to do all of the square and a square and a square. Don't you love that? Aren't you glad that I'm not going to show you all of that? But just look, look through because your direction tells you everything. This is your center. This is the center. This is round one in yellow. This is round two in a second red. And this is round three. Ding! It would be really useful if I turn on my machine. Very good, and let's see if it tells us about our seam allowance. What do you think? Oh! So if you're making a little six inch block, a little six inch, look at this little guy. Teresa did not want to do that, and I said, you can do it, you can do it. Look at that. But to make this fit into a two and a half inch square when it's done, you need to sew with a wide quarter inch seam. Wide one. I usually tell you this because of the numbers that we used. Okay, if you normally sew at 3.5, which is center needle, sew with 3.0, which is going to the left. To the left. It's going to the left. Yes. It's gone to the left, so that you want to do that. Um, and your, your 12 inch, you just sew with the regular quarter inch seam, okay? I'm only going to sew the center. And it says that right there, right? Sew with a quarter inch, 3.5. So just be careful. Uh, it, I think when you finally sew it together, you have to go to a scant. 
and we'll tell you. I tried to write all that down. I tried to write it all down for you. Thank you for paying attention. But remember when we do the center, how we put, we cut the two squares on one diagonal. Remember how we just flip so that the triangle is on the bottom because it is on the bias. bias. You're so good here, it's on the bias. And um, just regular quarter, okay, hit it. And this one is so good, you get, let to get, you get to let your tips hang out. Yes, right? Okay, that's one side. And now we're just gonna take it and flip it so that the triangle is on the opposite side. Eric, is my iron on? Oh, Gail, I asked Eric. Whoops. Gail told me, don't ask Eric. He's in charge of video. I forgot. I'm sorry. All right, so we have those two tips hanging out. They're really big, humongous tips, right? And so then you just set your seam. Oh, look at my, I have lots of, lots of red thread on the back. And you just open them, press them, right? And I'm going to use my um, two and a half inch ruler. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just reminding you. And so these you cut off. Ta-da! Yes, you use your fussy cut rulers a lot on this. So now this one goes on the opposite side. Take these, get rid of them. And then remember these go on the sides. Just the review. And what goes on the bottom? Triangle, flip it, right sides together. Equal tips hanging out on both sides. Yes. And so how are we doing? Do you remember pig's tail now? It's coming back to you. Unless you didn't get it done. <laughs> Was that you laughing, Flo? No, I got mine. You got yours done? Good. Good. Oh, and also, those of you that are coming to El Camino Quilters on Thursday, if you've done um, a First Lady quilt, you're welcome to bring it and share it with everybody. Be good. Is anybody coming? Who's the El Camino quilters in here? Oh my gosh! Oh, wow. That's amazing. How do you guys have time to go? You make time because you love it. Okay, so let's just give this one good pressing. Let's see if we're hot. Yes, we're hot. Press the steam. Okay, now remember after each round, then I'm going to, t then the um, book tells you how to square this up, up to what size. And for this one, at the 12 inch, I'm using the two and a half inch fussy cut. And you just drop it on there, two and a half inch fussy cut. And line it up so that you have those cute, oh, this is adorable. Oh, Eric, you have to go so close. Because look, these little tick marks in the center, it's perfect. If it weren't so perfect, I wouldn't have asked Eric to go in close. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm on to this, but it is perfect. Um, and the, the one for the six inch is not so easy. I do recommend that you use a six inch square up ruler. That little piece is squared up to only one and three fourths inches. That is little, huh? At this point, we might, we might be having, um, people dropping out on the six inch, huh? No? no. You love that one? Okay, so that's, that's the very center of it. This is where I've done it here. And then 
if you just keep on turning the page, beep. So then it tells you the second round, the round two is with red. And what size are these squares that are cut on one diagonal? Three and three quarters. Two and three quarters. Okay, so they're going to go on the sides like this. Let your tips hang out. Pardon me? Only two inches for the six inch, yeah. So it tells you every time. Okay? Let me get that. Oh, perfect. That looks good, huh? Okay, and then turn the page for round three. And now you have what size blue? Three and a half or two. Yeah, three and a half for the big guy. Then you just put it right on there. I like this kind of sewing. You don't have to have bobbin thread in, and it works really good. If you're crooked, nobody... See... Ah, ah, and to square this one up, the final squaring is with the four and a half inch fussy cut ruler. The four and, oh look, it's perfect again. Oh cool, Eric, you can go right on there. <laughs> it looks good. So the four and a half inch fussy cut is really handy for the 12 inch block, and then in the end, the six inch block is squared up with the two and a half inch fussy cut. I want to know, so how many of you have a fussy, fussy cut ruler set already? Good. You're allowed to stay. <laughs> cool. I know where you can get it. So that, that is the center. And let me tell you, the rest is very easy. We're stripping. We're stripping. We have long strips for the little um, pieces, the side pieces, and how and what colors? Red, cheese, and mold. <laughs> Red, cheese, and mold. Now you'll know if you're on track, you'll know if you're on track if you take the four and a half inch fussy cut. Whoops, that's only three and a half inch. Whoops, that won't work. Okay, you'll know you're on track if you take the four and a half inch fussy cut ruler and you put it down on this width of strip and it's that wide. It's four and a half inches wide. Mathematically, it could be only four and five eighths, but you can sliver trim equally from both sides. All right? All right. So I'm cutting these. Ah, pressing. Always to the dark on this one. To the dark. To the dark side. Okay. I shouldn't turn around like that, but I did. Okay. So that's going to be... Just watch how I get that right in there. See? This is going to go... Okay, so what color do we need to put next to it? Red. One and two not to worry but i think it see it does still say it doesn't say to change your seam allowance right okay that don't change it until it tells you to okay all right oh for the six inch oh we're not on 10 yet oh you're really moving along nancy you're half done? I hope that means it's, a, it's easy, right? It's my apple and my cheese. Is that cute? So remember, this one's just a fussy cut, but it has these pieces. Okay, so we're done with sewing strips together. I'm just barreling right through this because I can't wait to show you the crab apple. It's a new technique. Good? Okay, turn the page. Beep. So now we're going to do the nine patch. It's got all three colors in it. All three colors. They're very, very cute. And they come with from three different sets of strips. I just happen to have them. And what size are they? One and seven-eighths by 
by nine. Okay, by nine. Okay, so first, the first one is, row one is cheese mold cheese. Good? Yep. Press the seams toward the dark. Good. Second row, it's wax cheese mold. Toward the dark. You'll remember this, though. We will. You'll remember it. We know if, if your teacher makes you laugh, you remember better. And then the last row, row three, is cheese. Wow. Cheese. And you press toward the, toward the dark. Okay. So get them all pressed. And they should also measure four and a half. Four and a half. This is going good. And now... If we want to make a square out of it, what size do we have to cut this little section? One and seven eighths. You're so good. And get rid of that. And one and seven eighths is just one eighth shorter than two. These crazy measurements. I wish that we didn't have to use them, but we do. Because it just doesn't work. Sometimes, you know, Teresa and I will make this block, you know, three, four, five times, just making adjustments in our seam allowance, making like an eighth of an inch adjustment in your um, size of your piece. It's just pretty amazing until we get it right. And this, get rid of it. Okay, turn the page. We're going to do a nine patch, okay? So the first one is... The one with the mold, and then the one with the mold and the wax, and the last one is the wax. Is that cute? It's very, very cute. And when you sew these together, everything locks. Do, 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 do. Do you love locking seams? Do you love locking seams? Yes. I can't, I can't sew without locking seams. How about you? It's awful when they don't lock. And they lock the whole way, all three of them. And then actually the next blocks, they lock too. Okay, so we've got our nine patch. I'm so fast up here tonight. I've got my nine patch all sewn. And now I'm going to just put this. Get It gets turned. See the, ch the green makes a little chain? Aww. Is that cute? It's so cute. So it's just, it's all, it's piecing that you know, but it is really fun when it's all laid out. And I can't wait to see what you do with it. Ta-da! And I just want to show you the seams right here go in. The piece that goes right next to it, the seams go out. And then here, seams go in, seams go out. So it all locks together. Cool. That's really good. I think you should be impressed. But there's, there's this little saying about it. It says, in ancient Greece, just think about this. When a man proposed to a woman, he would toss an apple at her. If she caught it, that meant she accepted the proposal. What if she drops it? What if she really wanted them, but she couldn't hold on, huh? That's not good. That's not good at all. Okay. Mm. Oh, that cheese is so good. Isn't that yeah, cheese good? good. Yeah. Here, Ben, Jim, Mom. Okay, Ben. Come here, Ben. Come here, Ben. Catch. Good dog. Good dog. <laughs> okay. So, it's the block is very interesting, and... and I always wonder why blocks are named as they are. But if you look at the block, I think that this is, this is probably the apple. These are the apples all lined up in a box, aren't they? Use your imagination. These, 
These are the apples all lined up in the box. And if you look at the picture of the blossom, the apple blossom has five units. Five units, right? So look at this. How many units? Five. Do you think that maybe this is the leaves? This is the blossoms to the leaves? I don't know. We have to make these things up. But anyhow, this was named by Nancy Cabot. Nancy Cabot, who was actually Loretta um, Rising. Loretta Rising. Okay, so notice that we don't have to do strip piecing on the center nine patch. It's just five reds and four lights, okay? Five little squares and four. And you just sew a nine patch together, but if you turn on the next page, it's very important at step number 10. It says, check, these, check out your measurements. You do need to use a scant quarter inch seam to get this measurement, and it needs to be uh, four and three-fourths inches. Okay, and number 10, it's really important. If you want to circle it, check it, scan quarter inch, and you'll get four and three-fourths. Okay, four and three-fourths. Okay, now, I didn't take the easy way. I took the traditional way. Ooh, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to take this nine patch that we made and we're going to inset it into the four background squares. Ooh. <laughs> Sally said that we want to do that because, because it looks good and it teaches you a new technique. Okay? And it looks really good. Otherwise, you'd have seams everywhere. But all you have now from the front side is a little seam hanging out right here. Okay? <laughs> I can see I'm winning on this one. <laughs> you don't think I am? It's not hard. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to mark the quarter inch seam allowance here. And I, found, I fell in love with these pens because... You can mark, and you can make a pretty dark mark, and then you just put it, you iron it, and the marks disappear. I'll, I'll show you, I'll, because I want to tell you, I think it's really funny. I was just working at, um, I hope the iron's hot. Okay, can you see little marks? I was just working on a, in a hotel on a white tablecloth. Whoop. Uh huh. That's a white line on two different fabrics. Oh. It leaves a white line on batiks. It leaves a white line on batiks. Yeah. Oh. Well, anyhow, it, it's supposed to go away with heat. And one lady said that she was drinking coffee and the steam got on her patch and her line went away. Yep. So we can make this really good. We're going to do some insetting. And what's really important when you inset, I think I'm going to use the black one is that you know your quarter inch seam. And so I put the quarter inch line along the edge here, and I'm just gonna draw kind of a dark line, a little short line in the corners. Okay, you see them? No, oh, go real close, Eric. Really close. Yeah, okay, you see that? So then when you put the next side, you line up the next side and draw that line you actually create this X. Can you go closer? Right there. Yeah, there it is. And actually, you can even put a little dot on it. So if you just keep on turning and marking the quarter inch on all four sides, you eventually get an X, yeah? Okay, so let's do this. Oh, that cheese was so good. Oh my gosh. Would have been really good with wine. <laughs> Don't you think? Absolutely. Okay, so I have it all marked, and that's what you show on page 15. You see that? Okay, so we've got that. Now, turn the page. Beep. Okay, we have our background squares. Um, normally, if you were doing a... 
um, 12 inch block, what size would each one of the squares be? Six and a half, you're good. But I gave you a quarter of an inch leeway so you can square it up in the end. These are six and three fourths inch squares and we're going to just use, a, use our regular ruler for a template. It says to mark in so much. What am I supposed to mark in? Three and an eighth. So see how I have three and an eighth right there? Three and an eighth, and I'm just going to put a mark right there. And I'm going to go to the opposite corner and put in three and an eighth. Let me see. Three and an eighth. All right? Good? And then just take your ruler and line it up from corner to corner. And I have to tell you, I wasn't very successful with layer cutting. I think this is really critical. Really critical. So don't, don't layer cut. Okay? But you can take this and just discard that. Okay? Now, on the right side of this, I'm going to draw more more lines more lines and I'm just going to do it the same way that I did I'm just drawing on this little end it's on the right side oh are you guys okay I hear a lot of talking okay so now I'm on page 17 you're gonna have to shoot a little banjo a Benjamin or they're not gonna know okay so, I'm on page 17. I'm going to, I have my little thing cut off. I have my little marks, right? So, I'm going to take a pen and I'm going to put it right through there. And then I'm going to go right through here, right to here, and put it right through there. Okay? So, that's what we have to match up there. And then you go over to this one and you put your pen in. And you put your pin right through here. All right, are we doing good? So now this is what you have to see. This is all you have to see, Sally. You see how much of a tip you have to let hang out. That's the idea, but you have to let something hang out. Can you see that on both sides? Okay, cool. It does say be extremely accurate. Okay, so it didn't say to change your seam allowance, so. <gasps> but this is my problem. I want to put my needle right on that dot. And with this quarter inch foot, honestly, I cannot see that dot. So this is what I said. Put on an open toe foot an open toe foot. Okay, put on an open toe foot. And then you can really see. Benjamin. <laughs> because when you, so you can see it. And that's what I said for visibility because when you start using matching thread, see this is all matching thread, that is so hard to see. You just can't even see your lines, and seeing your lines is important now. Seeing your lines is important. And since I put on, um, change my foot, I'm also going to change and make sure I have a quarter inch seam allowance. So now I know my quarter inch. You guys have to know your quarter inch. I'm just going to pick that pin out right there. And I'm going to try to put my needle right on the dot. Oops, I didn't make it. Pick it up. Oh, it's on the dot. Can you see that? You probably can't, can you? I, yeah, can you see it? Okay, so now I'm just going to hold my seams flat. So that quarter inch seam. And I'm going to pull my pin out on the other side. I'm all lined up. I'm going right over here. I have this feature called lock in place. Do -do 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 -do. And cut the threads. Ah! Oh. And now you get to see. Perfect! 
It's very perfect. So how are your illustrations? You think they're good? So dot to dot. This is the first one that you have. And now you want to open the background and press your seam toward the background. That's that. Okay, and so now I'm going to just take my second one. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, I'm not going to mark this one. I'm going to live dangerously. Oh, maybe I don't want to. Not a good idea. Oh, I can do it. Okay, so I'm going to put this background right side up. I'm going to put my four patch or my nine patch so I remember my seam right there. Remember how much tip was supposed to hang out? And over here, I'm only going to go to the dot over here, but I'm going to make sure I keep that all pulled out of the way. All right? So I'm going to slide it back in there. I have my open toe foot on. I'm so cool. So I can see. Trust me. I wouldn't tell you if I thought it wasn't important. I was struggling. Okay, so we're going, we're going, we're going. We're still doing a quarter inch foot. We're going over to the dot. We're going to stop on the dot and we're going to lock it. And cut it. Okay, so open it again. Open it again and fold your, press your seam toward the background. Ah, okay, that's good. So you just keep on going, just keep on going around. <laughs> and then once you have all four sewn on there, then turn to the next page. Now you just fold your background, right sides together, line up your background, okay? This is what I'm doing. I'm sewing from the outside edge in and I'm stopping at the dot. Not too bad, huh? And it's still that quarter inch seam. It didn't say to change it, right? Nope, didn't say to change it. So now I'm just going to put my foot down and start on the outside. Whoops, I pushed my wrong button. I cut it. Okay. And just sew in. I'm starting on the outside going in. Here is my not. Oh, you like to start at the inside? Yeah, you know what? It, it works. But watch, it's going right up to that point. I stopped right there. And I'm locking. And I'm cutting my thread. I don't know. I'm going to look. Sandra says it's going to match absolutely perfect. It probably will. Let me look first. <laughs> okay, I do know one thing, and that is that you have to open this seam. Open the seam. Open the seam, and then you just lay the nine patch flat. There's a lot of threads right there. You open the background seam and you lay the nine patch flat. Look at your picture on 18. Does it look like that? Yeah, you ready? We're going to turn it over. I can't wait. Ooh, look at that. Is that nice? Very nice. Very, very nice. And so I'm just going to push it. Put it as Eric's looking at it, I stand up and move it. Okay. 
little steam will do it a lot of good. <laughs> if I can get the steam. Steam. Uh-oh. We forgot, Eric, that it turned off. Gail. <laughs> you were supposed to be up here. Huh? They told on you. They told on you. Okay, but it, but it does look good. See? Okay. And now, like magic, I am going to produce one that is completely done. But first, we are going to turn this on because you can't do fusible <laughs> with a cold iron. Somehow it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Okay, so as I said before, we just used the paperback fusible. And you have three different parts of this little guy. Actually, you have one big center one. And then you have two beside it, middle. And then I call these the ends. How's that make sense? The center, the middle, and the ends. And you just trace them on the paper side of your paperback fusible. And then you just cut them out and peel the paper away. And I think we've done this before, haven't we? Has everybody done it? OK, peel the paper away. Ta-da! And it's really cool. This is what I did. I started out and I did it like this. That doesn't work. <laughs> you got to go into the point, all right? Go into the point, and you have the seam underneath. So you just line up the center of the point um, right along there. And then you have the two middle ones. The two middles, and I'd use the same fabric for these two. And your stiletto was quite useful in helping. And then your ends are a different fabric. And they're very interesting because they have a flat side and then this curved side. And I think this one's the wrong piece, right? That's the wrong piece. Yes, it is the wrong piece. Would this be? Nope. Oh my goodness, here we go. The dyslexic thing again. I can't stand this dyslexia. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Here, there's that, and there's that. Okay, the flat bottom goes across the bottom. You can see, I think you can see it visually. But if you want to, you can just keep your templates all um, um, separated out so you don't mix them all up. Oh, this one? Yeah. And so, and so what do you think? Would you like to cut out some time and just combine these two templates together and just make one big thing? The reason that I didn't do it is because I know that there are you there are you crazy applicators that are going to want to needle turn every single one of these and make it all a different color aren't you aren't you no not you make it all one so then you just i got steam look at that i got steam so right now it doesn't really matter how long you hold it but just Hold it down. What's the reason to keep different colors on the um, Just because Nancy Cabot said to do it that way. You could, it, it could, do you think that it would be interesting with two, two, and one of different colors? Yes, but they are really different. Here, I'm going to bring it over here for you, Eric, and show you. Um. Not by much. No, no, no. Not by much. But see, Teresa did this one. She did a little zigzag. A little zigzag around the outside edge. Isn't that cute? 
just a but she does have separate pieces there's cuts in between too and it's just it's just traditional I just stuck with tradition and put it together and I'm we're doing good that's the crab apple yay thank you you like that it's kind of, it's really fun I think personally it's fun to learn to do something different because I just said oh no way I can't do that when I look at these blocks all the time I just say I can't do these and then I have to do it